Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're delighted to be joined by the gentle giant himself, Oliver Friesen, CEO of Golden Metal Resources. Welcome back, Oliver. How's things? Yeah, things are going well. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we'll go giant. Down. We've never seen him angry yet, so just wait <laughs> until you see if he's angry. It might not be so gentle. Then. Yeah. <laughs> All over the volcano, I reckon. <laughs> just don't annoy him, basically. Exactly. But yeah, exactly. so obviously, just seen the the, uh, the company provide an exploration update on its flagship pilot mounting project in Nevada, USA. Magnetic inversion modeling of the geophysical survey data conducted by SJ Geophysics Limited identified a significant buried magnetic body at depth within the Porphyry South target area, supporting the presence of a porphyry system. This target will be drilled in the upcoming campaign starting May the 11th. Key findings include a magnetic anomaly bordered by a moderate chargeability halo and coinciding with a resistivity anomaly, enhancing the porphyry potential. The company has staked an additional 12 claims covering 248 acres around Porphyry South for future mining infrastructure. You highlighted the significance of the results and noted the potential for further discoveries at Dollar Porphyry South and the nearby Garfield project. Pilot Mountain seems to just get better and better, Oliver. Yeah, well, it was Garfield getting better and better for the last few months, and we've kind of switched gears a little bit here in advance of the drill program. And, and uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, Pilot now, things look better and better. So we're in a very fortuitous position with two assets that uh, continue to deliver for the company. So, Oliver, I had a good I had a listen to your uh, some of the technical view on, on this, and obviously there's been a, a magnetic anomaly at Pilot Mountain there. It looks huge. To be honest with you, you showed a picture of the ideal pull free and what you've got, and like they're identical basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously hopes are high that this is this is pull free, but and copper. But the real crux of the drilling campaign that's about to start on your anniversary of one year being on the market is really to increase the amount of tungsten. Though this is, could be phenomenal. So tell us a little bit of how that is likely to happen by these other tungsten targets as well as obviously this news about the cop. Yeah, I think that's important point to make here, Kev, is that um, this is just one target. You know, the, the real focal point historically and still to this day remains the, the tungsten potential and, and what has been found and defined at surface within desert shielite mainly. But there's three other known tungsten copper silver zinc zones at surface scarns. And then there's three new targets that we also identified with the IP. So this is just one target that's going to be tested and drilled during this upcoming program. But, you know, we have the cab by the tail, so to say, which is the largest tungsten deposit on U.S. soil with scope to hopefully mater- very materially increase what we have there in terms of the contained tungsten. And so lots to look forward to, you know, a lot of drill programs, it's one target, kind of one and done. This is, this the Porphyry South is just one of many, which I think really highlights the, the significance of this project in our portfolio. And you're obviously getting more and more cashed up. You got another 400,000 pounds or whatever from the warrants there recently. And that all has to be concluded by Friday, I presume. Uh, the one-year anniversary, and uh, you could be expecting yet another few hundred thousand for sure. I mean, I think there's about 800,000 pounds still to come in if people want to go for it. What's your expectations on that? Yeah, I mean, we've had great support on the Warren exercise and, and uptake, which is, you know, that's what Warrens are for. Um, we encouraged, and at the time when we did the IPO and pre-IPO, tough time in the market, and we rewarded those who backed us with warrants. And sure enough, those warrants are, are quite safely in the money now, and, and hopefully uh, we can continue to move upwards with the share price here on the back of some really exciting drilling results. So, yeah, the warrants are doing what they're supposed to do, bringing money to the business. It's going to be great to have that deadline passed because you know, it just means that um, there's no more shares being issues, I guess you'd say. So um, we've kind of not necessarily been, you know, we've been timed it perfectly, but it just happened to, to work out that drilling is going to start the day after the, the warrant expiry date moves past. So I think it's the time and probably ended up working really well and that, you know, we'll be kind of free and clear and able to to drill and, and see what the what uh, the results tell us. So yeah, the the money coming in also just it, it 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 makes our life a lot easier. We can expand the drilling program if we so if we see fit. Um, we have two thousand meters budgeted right now, but with the money coming in, we certainly have the scope now to increase that. 
and drill further holes. And, and that will be contingent on, on what we're seeing in some of the earlier holes. And then on top of that, Garfield continues to deliver. We'll have some inversion results there. So the money coming in just allows us to spend more money and, and, and deliver more results to our shareholders. That's what we're doing here. We don't you know, take more money in and pay ourselves more. We take more money in and we go deploy it in the ground because that's where we can really add value. So, I mean, if all that warm money comes in, which obviously is a big if, because I'm sure not all of it's going to come in, but a good proportion of what's left out there, you're going to be looking at two to three million pounds cash that you hold and after you raise 750,000 and then these warrants. So does that allow you to put more money into into Garfield as well at this stage or are you are you holding off until you see what happens at Palad? Absolutely. You know, we are now financially in a position with the warrants that we just announced this morning to do at Voltage Rill at, at Garfield. The, the great thing about Garfield is we can do our drilling, which is much lower cost. And we also have scope now to increase the amount of meters at Pilot Mountain. So the warrants, uh, it's been fantastic to see the, the, you know, the amount of people who have been exercising and supporting us for the longer term here. Because that money, as I mentioned, and as you mentioned, means we can we can do a lot more. And that's where we can really create some excitement here. So we haven't decided yet where that money's going to go. And we have to put out the inversion result, results at Garfield and finalize those. And that will tell us what those targets look like and what the next steps are. Uh, that's certainly very moot very quickly moving into the drill ready stage, but there's a lot of work that we want to do up a lot of holes we want to drill. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll let the, the war deadline pass here and, and we'll get continue to, to, to work at Garfield and Pilot. And then we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll know pretty soon where that additional capital is going to go and where we're going to deploy it. And the elephant in room is the U.S. government supporting the, the major tungsten product project that is in, in its own territory. How did it all go in Washington in terms of that? How did, how did you feel things were progressing? Yeah, so you know the the DC conference it was it was it was a pretty incredible conference, probably the best I've ever been to. The reason being with the the location in DC, a lot of um, you know pretty high up officials at the, the DOE, the DOD were able to attend, and I was able to meet with, with quite a few of them. So. Yeah, you know, we we've been very clear about what the timelines are for potential DOD grant, and we're still very very safely within those timelines. And um, you know, all the data points that exist in the public domain obviously lead us to be very confident that you know we could potentially be the recipients of a grant down the line here. So those uh, those conversations and those work streams continue in the background. Nothing's changed. Um, if anything, our position we believe has gotten much much stronger with the need to domesticate and to reshore the tungsten supply chains in the U.S. So uh, that's uh, another very important and exciting part of the business that's that's moving forward in the background. And as soon as we can announce anything, we certainly will. But as I'm sure everyone respects and appreciates because of the sensitivity of, of the, the grants and, and what we're doing here on the tungsten side, we have to kind of remain tight-lipped for now. Um, but uh, yeah, everything everything going for is planned in the background. We did ask, I think, this one before, but I just wanted to reiterate it. Well, what is the chances of some sort of grant for warfare? Yeah, so copper is is on the critical list for the DOE and the DOD as well. You know, it's it's not unlikely, I guess you could say. The, the reality is with copper, though, is there's a lot of copper deposits and mines in the U.S. So the, the competition for any copper-related grant would be much more fierce. Whereas in the tungsten side, we are, as far as we know, the only tungsten we own the only tungsten deposit of material size in the U.S., so we're cutting kind of, and holy. We're a, a big fish in a very, 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 very small pond when it comes to tungsten. So obviously, we feel a lot better and and, and stronger about our chances on the tungsten side, which is why that's what we've been pursuing mostly. Mm-hmm. But uh, copper is is a very critical mineral. It's everyone is looking for it. All the majors in the U.S. are trying to get their paws on anything copper related in the U.S. Any porphyry. Very early stage two, I saw a company drill one hole into a copper porphyry and they got a, a very large investment from Barrett on the back of that one hole. So it's, I'd say the majors are probably more interested in copper right now than the government, um, but the government is supporting copper as well. But uh, like I said, tungsten, we, uh, we're in a unique position with what we own here at Pilot Mountain on the tungsten front. So that's the, the grant and grant streams that we, uh, we're pushing forward at base here. And have you found the, uh, have you found the roots out of the titanium yet or not? <laughs> No, no roots all yet, just shelite, which is good because uh, that's what we're looking for. But uh, yeah, no, no roots all yet. I'll keep you posted if we find. Keep me posted if you find some roots. Always looking. I'm, I'm a lot more excited about tungsten, but uh, so that I don't have to make the same mistake about tungsten and titanium each time we talk. But anyway, I mean, 
more and more progress. You got to hit one of these. And ultimately, there seems to be so many opportunities. It's like a lucky dip. So, the odds of any of these are company makers. Well, free on Garfield, the gold on Garfield, the, uh, even the the silver we talked about last time on Pilot Mountain, the tungsten on Pilot Mountain, the garnets. You know, you've got so many opportunities that even the market capitalization right now, based on any of those particular products coming to uh, to fruition, are gonna send you skyward. I think. Yeah, I mean that's that's what this industry is all about, right? It's about um, you know proving things up and taking chances, right? And and drilling into new zones and trying to make discoveries, like like you said, w- drilling into one of these zones and finding what you hope to find can completely change the whole trajectory of the business and 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 the outlook going forward and the market cap and all that. So the key here is to have multiple targets. You know, the reality is when you have kind of three, four, five very exciting targets that have not been drilled, uh, it's very unlikely that you're going to find something within all of them. But like you said, if even one of those hits, that can change everything. So a uh, pilot mountain, so, you know, Port Free South, that's a very exciting target. We need to go drill it now. We don't know what's down there. The signs are certainly encouraging, but it's just one of many targets that we will be drilling. And then, as you mentioned, Garfield as well is proving up to have quite a few exciting targets. So, uh, yeah, lots of lottery tickets, so to say. And hopefully there are pretty high chance lottery tickets with the work we've done to, to get to that stage. And now it's about starting to test some of these things. And that's when things can get really exciting. Yeah, and the irony of it is you are called gold and metal resources. It was put together for a gold asset that was in Nevada, a scar and gold asset or whatever the word is. And, you know, when some money comes available, I presume you still want to do that. Yeah, no, gold and metal. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we have a bit of everything now. At least all the ones that I'm interested in. You know, we have the tungsten, we have the copper, silver, you know, zinc. But yeah, you know, originally the, the first asset we put in the company was gold. And that project, it doesn't get talked about much just because they're so well, economically viable. I mean, who, who wants gold when it's at all-time highs, right? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly right. I mean, it just shows you the depth of the portfolio. And that project is permitted. It's it's literally drill already. We have the sites all ready to go, and there's been some fantastic surface gold intercepts and trenches, and, and there's a feeder zone there and looking to find the source of all the gold. So um, we do need a, probably a, a company name change, but it, you know, if we went and drilled that gold property and, and found a, a Carlin-type gold deposit, then the name would certainly be fitting. But uh, yeah, it's just another you know feather in the cap or, or string in the bow or whatever you want to call it, but that one's ready to go as well. And if we had the money to do that and, and the bandwidth, we'd certainly go and drill that. And I imagine that will be drilled with gold, as you mentioned there, Phil, um, pretty much at all time highs here. So it's another one to keep an eye open for. Very good. Well, on that note, we'll say Oliver Friesen, CEO of Gold and Metal Resources. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thanks, so. Us. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.